Yo, Elliot, the Hindu religion makes a person aware of consequences of their actions and lets the person make the choice for themselves. Here, for the spiritual actualization of a human being, the Hindu way of thought recommends not to eat meat as it drags one's soul down to the flesh and material level, away from the Father and the Spirit into the putrid material world. The early Christians, if I recall correctly, were also vegetarians. The only reason why I'm considering eating meat is because of being sedentary for my entire childhood. My body needs to, get, uh, needs to be changed at a hormonal level. To increase testosterone naturally, meat is one of the best things to eat. But here I find myself at loggerheads with my aim of spiritual actualization. How would you justify eating meat in this case? when you have these two conflicting scenarios. So I, first I want to thank you for sending me your, uh, your pictures of your transformation and the growth that you're having as a result of you know, lifting weights and paying attention to your body in that regard. You say you have these two conflicting scenarios, but even, even, even your question proceeds from a place of conflict. Because if our goal is to rise above the muck and mire of the material world, then bodybuilding and producing high testosterone will also drag you down to the flesh and material world. And the reason why I say that is because you're right. Eating meat, meat grounds you, right? Meat is something that is, um, is low vibration, and when people say low vibration in the, in the new age, they think, oh, that means mean it's bad. It's low vibration. No, low vibration means it's concrete. Like air has what? High vibrations. It's all over the place, right? Light, high vibrations, vibrating very rapidly. Water, vibrating very rapidly. Material, minerals, rock flesh, all low vibration, right? So I, I want to first put that out there in terms of this judgment between low vibration and high vibration and which is better. Everybody's like, oh, I want to have high vibrations, man. Well, yeah, that's why you're always high. High vibrations means you're airheaded. It means that you, you're so light that you're not even on your feet. There's no grounding. There is, so... In the Christian faith, you talk about early Christians perhaps being vegetarians. I've heard that, and I've also heard other things. The created world, the material world, is not an evil world. It's not a bad world because it was made from God the Creator, and He said it was all good. Has it been corrupted? Yeah, it definitely gets corrupted. But the nature of nature is good because it's God's creation. That means things that are low vibration aren't lower or higher on the spectrum of what God deems uh, divine or worthy of his creation, right? He created it all. He created rocks and he created sunshine, low vibration, high vibration. So I just wanted to make this distinction, and I know this is not your question, but a lot of new agers, and I know I've thought in this way as well, they want everything to be high vibration, but then you can so high vibration that your feet aren't the ground and you're floating because you're an airhead, like I said. So you want things that are low vibration in your life. Low vibration is what grounds you, right? If I say grounded with a low voice, you know what I mean? It means woof, strong, woof, low, right? My voice is even a low vibration right now right very present high vibration very high very lofty not better or worse but high high vibration life is experienced through the interplay of high vibration and low vibration thought and material right air sun Mineral, water, dirt, right? It's all of it. So when someone embarks upon a spiritual journey and they forsake all low vibration, including meat, in my mind, they're living a half-life. 
They're only living partially life because most of those people forsake the flesh. I'm not of the opinion of forsaking the flesh. I'm of the opinion of putting it in its right place. Sometimes we overemphasize or overfocus on or are hypnotized by the flesh, by what we see. And we forget the higher vibration things like God. God is pure vibration everywhere at all times. Omnipotent, omnipresent, right? Omniscient. So he's all of it. There are times where we have to pull ourselves up out of the muck and mire of our physical world. And so when wanting to go on a spiritual path, I'm just giving you my opinion on this stuff. Fasting has been the order of the day. Fasting is the prescription for that. I don't believe living a lifestyle of high vibration foods, right? Like I only eat fruit. These guys, they're doing themselves any favors because they're living an imbalanced life. Now, are those there are those that are too low vibration and, you know, Maybe eat a lot of junk food and stuff like that, which is really low vibration, meaning that it's like all man-made and it's junk, chemicals and shit like that. That's a problem as well. We got to find the middle path in many ways, right? And so when it comes to extreme diets, which I think veganism, vegetarianism is an extreme diet, I don't think it makes anybody more spiritual in the long run. But I do believe that fasting or maybe even fasting from meat for a given time and i know this is something that the early christians for a fact did they would fast from meat particular seasons particular days particular um things of this nature so you want to uh you you want to at times do that right that's why you have lent this is why you have ramadan this is why we have fasting but the contradiction in your question comes from the fact that you want to increase your testosterone. You want to have bigger muscles. You want to be more grounded, but you're having a spiritual conflict about the food that you need to eat in order to support that. If you were like just saying, hey, I'm just going to have low testosterone, low muscle tone, and not be attached to the flesh whatsoever, and I'm just going to be a breathitarian, or whatever the case may be, and I'm on this self-actualizing path, I wouldn't touch you. I'd say, fine, well, do whatever you want. I mean, that's it. That's the path that you're on. But you're kind of saying, I want this self-actualization, this spiritual high, this high vibration, but I also want big muscles. I also want high testosterone. I also want, a, I want my cake and eat it too, once again. I want all the things that even contradict each other. And kind of, in a way, you're asking for things that contradict each other. You want spiritual actualization. I will tell you this as a, and look, I ain't no different than you. As a man who seeks spiritual, spiritual growth in my life, I do know that the more time I spend in the gym and the more time I stay eating steaks, the more that's gonna take away from that. Why? Because it's, it keeps me grounded here. I didn't, you know, fasting is what brought me back to the faith. Fasting, fasting is the most spiritual practice that anybody can engage in because it totally removes you from all of it. It removes you from food, trying to build muscle, trying to have high testosterone. All those cares need to be set aside. You mortify your flesh in a way that you just leave, you don't care about those things. I'm fasting, I'm reaching for heaven, I'm afflicting myself for the Lord. Right. That's what it is. So you're doing one or you're doing the other. And I would invite you to look at it that way. It's two different seasons. Right. You doing you want to do bodybuilding and have high testosterone or do you want to be a spiritual high flyer? Which one? I don't think you could do both at the same time. There are seasons. Right. It may be like, OK, you know what? This season of my life for the next three years, I'm going to eat meat. I'm going to build my muscle and increase testosterone. And then later on, you might say, I want to forsake all that and I'm going to go spiritual. I did that. People, listen, man, I'm telling you this stuff, and you could just watch me, because I do it. Bodybuilding Elliot, Strongman Elliot, Powerlifting Elliot on YouTube, yo, Elliot, everybody, everybody loves the guy. Then I start fasting, growing my hair. Everybody says, oh, this guy went crazy. No, I just did that for a season, and then I did something else. I, I went into a spiritual season. I went into a season of introversion. This is why I didn't make videos. I disappeared, come back like, you know, 140 pounds with long hair. I was like, what the hell happened to this guy? Well, I, chose, I, I took a season away from the matrix in a way, 
and I cut out. I, it was, I would cut out meat. I was only eating like fish for a while. I cut out food, right? I didn't care. I told you earlier, my, I know my T was low. My testosterone was low because I, I lost my sex drive. But I didn't care. I didn't care because my aim was spiritual growth. One or the other. I don't think you can do both. I, maybe you can, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Right? You're doing one or you're doing the other, right? Are there, you know, meat eating, bodybuilding, real spiritual people? Yeah. There are. And I think it's possible. But it will require a significant amount of paying attention and self self awareness and seasons to develop. So anyway, so that's my opinion on that. You also have another question, and I'm just gonna tie them both together here. He says, the world today is much divided, divisive, and intrusive. An observation I've made is that we as humans are geared to, towards seeking authority in the form of God or one's own self. Uh, and you're right. We do seek that. We just made ourselves the authority since the Enlightenment and, you know, the so-called, you know, progress. We no longer recognize a transcendent authority because, as Nietzsche said, we, God is dead and we killed him. And then, but that vacuum has to be filled by what? Worshipping something else. And worshipping money, worshipping fame, worshipping ourselves, worshipping my emotions, my opinions, worshipping women, worshipping porn, worshipping phone. We're all religious. Every single one of us are religious, except to what authority? Good question to ask. Anyway, I didn't mean to cut you off. So he says, so I've accepted the fact that democracy at scale is in some ways like going against human nature. As beautiful as it may be, it's not our natural proclivity. I believe you. I, I agree. The democracy is not. And America is, should not and has not been or wasn't designed to be a democracy. It was a republic. But I get where you're going. And I think you're right. He says, uh, do note that no religion is democratic in nature. I agree. And I know that. He says, I also recognize if we want to conserve our authority and values, we have to fight for them. Otherwise, if we, uh, it will be decided for us. Here again, if one gets fixed on earning money so that they can break the material matrix, it drags a person away from breaking free from the spiritual matrix. I believe that breaking free from the spiritual matrix is the path to true freedom. But if we do not focus on breaking the material matrix, we might not even have a chance at breaking free from the spiritual matrix. Uh, pointing us towards AI, meta, and techno-human singularity. In the coming age, or the coming change of tide, how should one navigate these waters? In the same way that you navigate the waters that we were talking about before with regard to testosterone and bodybuilding and fasting and vegetarianism. I think in a way, it doesn't mean that I'm right, I'm just kind of giving you my opinion from where I'm at right now, that there is a tender balance, that there's a balance that we must seek. God, Jesus says, be in the world, but not of it. Be in the world. What does that mean? Be fully here. What's going on in the world? What are people doing? What are people saying? What are people using? How is the world unfolding in it, right? AI, meta, techno-human singularity, uh, cell phones, computers, internet, right? Be in the world can't pretend that the world is not here. A lot of people try to do that. Be in the world, but not of it. Meaning, all of it is just an illusion. In, in fact, I'm just passing through. I don't own any of this. None of the things that are here are really truly of me or belong to me. I'm otherworldly. Your soul is otherworldly. We're a, a pilgrim on this journey, in essence, right? We're just, we're, we're stopping by for a while. That's the attitude that God is giving or, or, is, or is imploring through Christ when he says, be in the world, but not of it. So I agree with everything that you're saying. I'm of the same uh, point. I'm of the same opinion um, that the world is, the world is getting weirder and weirder and people are becoming more and more attached to the ways of the world. And I think, I think we can, I think it's two sides of the same coin to either be totally hypnotized by it or too much resisting it. I think both are a mistake. 
I think being wrapped up in it, thinking, ah, this is it. We've got the power that we've always wanted. We can do anything. We are gods is, an, is, is one end of the spectrum that a lot of people fall into, right? And, and you might not say that outright, but when you wake up in the morning and the first thing you have to do, you must do is check your emails or check your messages so that you can respond and make things happen. It means that I'm hypnotized with the, pow the, the, the imaginary power that I have through this technology that makes me the god of my own world. I remember when I first got a cell phone, I became a god of my own world. And, it w and I, I think back now and I'm like, whoa, that was... That was uh, that's something that I did that I couldn't see then, but I could see now. And I remember marveling at the fact that I could do work all day. I remember thinking this. I was like, with this in my pocket, I can check my YouTube videos. I can answer emails. I can even, do, I could write book. I could do all, all this. And even now they're better. I can make videos with my phone. I am the Lord of this world with my magic wand, right? And people really get this power trip on it. And, and it's so insidious such that if this disappears, people freak out. My God is gone. My magic wand is gone. The thing that gives me my identity in this world and that I worship every 15 minutes is gone. What will I do? You just lose your phone for a little while or you like take somebody's phone away for a little while or hide it from them. Watch how quickly their whole life falls apart. We've made ourselves our own gods. Um, democracy at scale, like you said, goes against human nature. I'm totally on board with that. I totally recognize the, the folly that is democracy and the foolishness that we've fallen into as a result of thinking that somehow we have power, right? We have collective power, and collective power is the scariest power. Collective power is actually slavery. Democracy, in a way, is actually slavery, and in many ways, it's because we fall to the lowest common denominator. So the, the, and the people that have the greatest vices have the, great, have the loudest voices. And so we end up falling into all kinds of snares, like, you know, democracy allows us to have abortion, right? Now, is that actually a freedom or is that a vice? Is that a virtue that you have power over another's life that you can just destroy it in the womb? Or is that a vice? Does democracy actually bring us closer to virtue or does it make... It, or does it uh, uh, allow for more vice, right? And if it's about mob rule and it's about the lowest common denominator, all you got to look at is what the TV is telling most people to do. If you want to know the way the democracy is going to go or the way the masses move, all you got to look at is who's manipulating them, right? Who's, who's pulling their puppet strings? I lost my focus here, my literal focus on the computer. A little blurry. Yeah, whatever, I'm just going to be blurry. So uh, I'm with you. I agree with you. And I take the same philosophical uh, standpoint as you do with regard to all this stuff. But what do we do? Do we, re do we resent it? Well, I guess you could. You could run off to the mountain, right? And you could be not in the world at all. Not of it and not in it. But I don't think that God expects that from us. And I don't think he requires it from us. I don't think he necessarily wants it from us. Because then what happens is we... In another way, and a lot of the um, a lot of the monks in the monasteries, there we go. A lot of the monks in the monasteries and the desert fathers who spent you know time living in caves and stuff, they started warning against. They started warning against living too much by yourself, being too having too much solitude, and they warned against it because that's when when you're by yourself, that's when Satan is can really get you. That's why Jesus was tempted by Satan when he was fasting in the in the desert for 40 days because he was by himself that's when that's when the, that's when you really got to be careful is when you spend too much time alone so anyway i know i'm talking circles i'm talking about a lot of different things you, you you say in the coming change of time how does one navigate these waters i'll tell you what though too i know you're a young man i'm probably about twice your age remember this you're gonna die the world is going where the world is going and you will have nothing to do with it. 
right? The other day I was ranting against, you know, AI and the meta world and stuff like that. But the bottom line is I'm not, I can't fight that. <laughs> I have no, and I have no interest in fighting it. Now I might not give my power over to it, right? I might resist in that way in that I'm not going to dive two feet into this thing, but I'm not trying to effectuate change. I'm not trying to make people not do it. I'm not judging anybody except the choices that I choose to make. So the world's going to go the way the world's going to go. And it's and, and, and in fact, God's always in charge. When God allows Satan to reign, it's because God is allowing Satan to reign. When, when God allows a demon to tempt you, it's because God said, yes, I give you permission to tempt that person. God is always in charge anyway. And he's got a plan that's way bigger than than any of our imaginations. So even the coming of AI, meta, techno community, right? Uh, a singularity. This is all stuff that God's allowing for a particular reason, right? I remember reading a book called uh, The Science of Getting Rich. It was written in like the 1920s. And the guy who was writing the book, I don't, know if, I don't know if he's coming from a Christian perspective or what, but there, was very, there were a lot of spiritual truths within and he talks about how you can't get rich. In other words, you can't, you can't fulfill your, in their way, in the, the idea of this book, fulfill your potential, fulfill your life if you're too busy looking at the things that you don't want. And this book was written in the 1920s, so I remember the guy, was, he was saying, if you're complaining about the Carnegie, right, like Carnegie who owned the um, steel factories or Vanderbilt, who's like, think about, think about how people bugged out when the first train happened. I remember reading about people who like they would not ride on a train because they said that it defied it defied nature, defied spiritual law and physical law and that it would screw up time and that if you got on a if you got on a train and you drove across the country that there was somehow you're perverting your 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 perspective on life and you're perverting nature and you shouldn't do it. Getting on a train. And and that's not much different than putting on a VR headset today in that it is what it is. It's how you relate to it. The train is not an evil. It's how you relate to it. The AI is not, well, maybe, but it's not an evil if you don't, re if you don't relate to it. And so once again, it's about being in the world. You say, you know, breaking free from the, from the spiritual matrix. I like that you make a distinction between spiritual matrix and the, um, and the physical matrix. The spiritual matrix is the more powerful of the two. And you know this because you've seen what happened to the world since 2020. People are under the hypnosis of a spiritual matrix that's unfolded through COVID. I can't believe how many people have, they have lost all reason. Their brain, it's like their brains don't work anymore because it's a spiritual battle. Battle. I see these people who, who claim science, 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 but then when presented with science that uh, refutes their propaganda, they cannot hear it. That's a spiritual matrix. Their soul is ensnared. Yeah. These are people who's, who's, who, they're, they're trapped in a more, the slavery of the soul is much more damning than that of the body. And this is a Christian concept also. Let them, let them imprison your body. Let them beat your body, but do not give them your soul. And so we, we, we and, the, and the whole process of soul ensnarement begins with training of the mind. And so we've got to take back, our, take back our education, take back our mind, take back our world from those democracy craters. I'm not going to go too far on this rant, but I've been learning about the quote unquote enlightenment and how in fact it's an endarkenment. The whole, uh, you know, there's so much praise for the French Revolution when the French Revolution was nothing more than a bloodbath done by atheists to destroy tradition and bring forth the postmodern mess that we're living in right now. Democracy is not the God that we've been told it is. The Enlightenment is not the God that we've been told it is. So-called liberty and freedom is not the God we've been told it is. All of those have, in essence, given us license for vice. That's what it is. Right. So-called freedom is in many ways turns out to be vice. Real freedom, real freedom should be posed as the option between virtue and vice. That's really what true freedom is not about doing whatever you want. 
Freedom is not about doing whatever you want. Real freedom is about knowing what's right, knowing what's wrong, and the freedom to choose right. Freedom is about choosing the right path, the elevated path, the sanctifying path. Because if you don't have freedom to choose what's right, you'll be forced into what's wrong. But today, we're not forced into what's wrong. Take notice. We're seduced into what's wrong, so we willingly accept it. That's why we call it freedom, but it's not. Sexual liberation is not freedom. And if you, and if you learn, if you study uh, E. Michael Jones in his book, Libido Dominande, he talks about Jews and how they enacted a technology to forsake the souls of the people they wanted to control at a particular time and shows up in different ways, but they did it through slavery to vice, pornography. They took over the television stations and streamed pornography for 24 hours a day so that the people would fall into their most base and dependent and addictive ways, right? It was a tactic of war. Pornography was used as a weapon of war. So when we're so free that we have pornography and we think that that's somehow a, a virtue of freedom, we don't realize that it's a weapon of war. It's a form of enslavement. Sexual liberty is sexual enslavement because now we are addicted to our vices. And I, I'm happy that your generation, the Zoomer generation, is beginning to see that now. You guys are much more austere, have much more... Uh, boundaries and are much more warrior-like in your mentality, at least, than uh, the boomers in my generation. So anyway, dude, I like what you're doing. I, uh, I acknowledge you for your efforts, and I, I encourage you to keep going, bro. And uh, these various things that seem to be contradictions in your life, sit with them. Sit with the contradictions. Don't, need, don't feel that you need to solve contradictions, but notice we started out today talking about noticing, and you seem to be a dude that's noticing. So continue to notice and allow God to lead you. I'm done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. That sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.